In this tutorial we will be creating this date and time drop down menu. So it's very simple, we just, we've just we got three drop downs and then we can choose which day and then the month. And obviously the number of days they correspond to the actual month that we're on, so February is 28. But then sometimes if we go on, so 2020 was a leap year, so there will be 29 days in this year. And then we go on to January, which has got 31 days, but then it stays 29, and then we can just scroll down 31 days. And it goes back 100 years from the previous year that we're on, so it goes back to 1921, 100 years ago exactly. And the reason why I'd want to do this, because there is a date and time picker, just that's just built into HTML. But the problem with it is that the support is pretty bad. So you might want to go back to basics and just do this drop down, maybe as a backup, or maybe you just want to do it by default instead of the date and time. And if you do want to do this, then keep watching and I'll tell you how to do it. So here we are in a new project folder in VS Code, my code editor of choice. We'll start by creating the markup file and then we can do an exclamation mark in VS Code to create the HTML boilerplate code automatically for us. I'll just zoom in so you can see this. And as usual, we'll link to a style sheet. Again, this isn't going to be styled amazingly because you want to keep this tutorial as short as possible. So I'll just be using standard select and option tags. But you can create your own drop down if you know how to do that. First of all, though, we'll do the form tag so we can actually have something to put the drop downs in. And we don't need an action because it's just a dummy website. And the first label will be for day and we'll do the corresponding drop down. And so it's got an ID of day and it's called day, but that's not really that important. What's most important is the ID because we'll be targeting these drop downs by the IDs in the JavaScript file. Again, we'll do exactly the same thing for month and we'll keep them in span tags because you want them displayed vertically, not horizontally, which is the default behavior. I've input elements in a form, they display horizontally until the row is fully exhausted but we want to display everything vertically, so wrap them in span elements so we can easily do that. But the last one that we need to do is for the year, so we'll do that now. Okay, now once we've got all these three spans, this is all the markup that we need. The only other thing that we'll do actually in this markup file is just do a little link to the script that we'll be using. So I'll simply call it script.js because again, this isn't a real application. As for the style sheet, it's going to be very simple. Again, the styling will be very simple because this isn't a real application. The link to this project will be posted in the description so you can look at it there if you want. But essentially, we've selected every element and we set box sizing border box to include the margin and padding. And we've removed any margin and padding that our elements might have by default. We set the font family. The body, because we're displaying flex, it needs to be it needs to have a minimum height of 100 viewing height, so we can actually center everything vertically in the middle. Because by default, display flex elements they have 100% width, but they don't have 100% height, so we we'll need to set the height here. And then, as for this one, as I said before, we'll target the span elements in the form, and then we'll do display block, and that will display them vertically, not horizontally. And then we'll add some padding on the vertical axis between them. And then as for this, we're just removing some default styling that our browser might add to our form elements. And we don't want that because it might make our form elements look inconsistent from each other. And as you can see, this is the result. We zoomed in a bit. I'll put it to the side so you can actually see what's going on. I'll move this for now. And if you're wondering what that was, that was just a VS Code extension called Live Server. But this is what we have here. And again, like I said, I was zoomed in. But what we need to do now is a JavaScript file. So I'll create that file here. Again, we'll close this now because we don't even need the files anymore. Well, we do need them, but we don't need to look at them. And so the first thing that we will do is create references to all of our drop downs. Again, this is the reason why we gave them IDs so we could target them in the JavaScript file. And there are constants as well because we won't be changing the assignment of them. We'll only be changing things like values on these actual node elements. Now we will create this array that will hold every single month in a year. It's quite tedious to do this, but again, I'll post the link to this project in the description so you can just copy it from there for yourself. Okay, and now we'll probably do the easiest part of the scripting, and that is filling out this months drop down for the months. And it's the easiest one because the months is always the same regardless of what year it is. 
unlike the days, for example, where sometimes it's, well, in February it's 28 days, sometimes 29, but then, you know, in January is 31, and then in March there's also 31, and then etc. Okay, the function that we populate the months in, we wrap it in curly braces and then add curly braces at the end. So this will call it on document load, so straight away. And then we will loop through all of the months in the year, so that will be 12 iteration cycles. And then we will create an options element. And that option element, its text content will be the current iteration and we'll get that for months. So in the first iteration, this iteration will be zero, so we'll get January and then the next one it'll be incremented to one and then it'll be February, etc. Finally, we'll need to append this to the month select so that we actually have pop, so we have um, option elements inside the select here and then that will be represented as options in the drop down when we click on it to open it up. So we use the append child to do this. So this should be option, not option, that makes more sense then. And then we save. And as you can see, we, we got all the months now and this is good. One final thing that we need to do though is we need to set the month select and we need to set the default value to January, which is what it is by default. And obviously when we click on February, its value will now be February. But since it's January by default, we need to set this. So we'll just set it like that, very simple. Next, we'll do the populate days method and this will fill out the day drop down. And we need to take in the month because obviously the number of days that are displayed is directly determined by the month that we're on. So the first thing that we'll do in this method is we will remove all of the options inside of this day drop down. That's because we will need to call this method every time we change month. And when we do change month, obviously the days might be right. I mean, there's a chance that they'll be right, but chances are they'll be wrong. So we'll just start afresh in this method and we'll just delete everything so they can be added uh, against this drop down. And so we say, we do a while loop. So we say while there is a child in this day select element, then we need to remove it. And then when we remove it, obviously another one will be there. So we just keep on removing them until there's no more children to this day select element. And what we'll do now is we'll need to get the number of days and we'll just declare this variable for now. And all this variable will do is store the number of days in a month. So for February or January, sorry, that'll be 31. March, that'll be 31. April, that'll be 30, etc. And then we'll create this tedious if statement here. And all the months where there are a set 31 days are listed here. And then all the months where there's 30 days are listed here. Now the only discrepancy here is February, obviously and we'll get on to how we deal with that later on. But for now, we'll just leave it like so. And obviously, I know this is a pretty tedious if statement. So again, you can just copy it from the project in the description box below. And what we'll do now is we'll loop through. So we will have 31 iterations if it's 31. And the way that we do that is, okay, we start off at one because we actually need a value for the iterator. And then we say until it's less than or equal to Danum. So it'll only stop when, in, in, well, in the first instance, it'll only stop when the iterator equals 31. And that will mean that we actually get to render out 31 drop downs in total. Okay, and then we use the same principles as for. We create the option and then we set its text content to be one. And then since it increments, the next day will be two, etc. And then we say append child. We append it to the day select drop downs. So then we will actually be able to click on it and then see all the options later on. We'll now do the populate years function though, because that's the final drop down that we've uncovered. What we'll do now, what this will do is essentially just declare a new date, which is stores the current time that it was created. And then we say get full year, and that will simply extract the year from this date object. So it will be 2021 currently. And as shown in the example at the start, we will go back as far as a hundred years into the past as far as the drop the year drop down is concerned. And because we start at zero, we want 100 iterations. So we say less than 101. So we'll actually stop at 100 specifically. So therefore, there'll be 100 iterations. If I started at one, there'll be 99. But again, like I said, because it starts at zero, 100 iterations. Hope you understand. Again, we use the same principles as before, but this time we'll subtract the iterator. So our current year is 2021 and then subtract zero. That'll be the first iteration. So obviously it'll be 2021.
But then next iteration, plus one, and then we'll subtract one to 2020, we'll go back a year, and then we just keep on doing that until we go back to 1921, and then the loop will be over. And I actually realized that I made a mistake here. It wasn't year as I originally intended, it was I. So I meant to increment the iterator and not anything else. And so as you can see, we're getting, okay, we need to refresh because I just messed it up. So we'll just open live server again. And as you can see now, we're getting our results. And I mean, it's fine, but obviously we need to make it. So when we actually change things, the other values change as well accordingly. So we need to do on change listeners, event handlers for these select elements, which we stored up, up at the top. And so as you can see, when we change both year and month, the days should change accordingly. So if we go to, we'll say February, oh yeah, that's not working. Because, but if we go to March, then as you can see, we've got the relevant days. April, correct number of days. Again, like I said, it's not working because we haven't actually done this here, which is for February, this else block. And so what we'll do is we will get the year select dot value. So what year are currently on? Currently that'll be 2021, but now it'll be 2019. And if this if condition is met, so we'll say if new date year, so we'll say 2021. And then the first month, well actually well, it starts at zero. So we'll say February and then 29. Now this will obviously only exist on a leap year. So, and then we'll say get months. So if this date does exist, 29th of February, whatever year, then we will get one, but if it doesn't exist, then we'll get undefined. So inside here, we will set, we'll say day num, we'll say uh, day num 29, because we know that it's a leap year, but if this doesn't exist, then we know that there is no 29th day on the February of whatever year we're on, because it's not a leap year, so we'll set it to 28. And so now we should go, we'll go to February and yeah, well, it's not a leap year this year, so we can go to February, sorry, uh, 28. But then last year was a leap year, so we should have 29. Yep, again, same with 2016. That was also the leap year before last year. And yep, 29 again. Now, yeah, not a leap year, so 28. Very good. The final thing that we want to do is when we change years, it goes back to one. And we want to make it so it stays 28, even when we change months. And it's not essential to do this, but it's just a nice feature just for convenience. So we'll declare this variable and it'll be undefined at, when we on application start because it only is assigned a value when we actually choose a day ourselves. And so to do that, so when we select a day, we'll set previous day to be whatever day we chose. And so inside the populate days method, which gets calls, remember when we change the month and year. One, it will say if there has been a previous day because we've assigned a day here and then we change the month, obviously, yep, so it's staying now because we assigned the day four and then we change month. Now, the problem with this is if we do, okay, well, 31, obviously, there is no 31 on January, so it's not going to work. Sorry, February, so it's not going to work. So we'll know that it's not working if we changed it and we get an empty string like you saw back there when we did 28 and then we changed it back to January and it was nothing. So we'll say previous day minus one. However, in our case, it was 31, but then the maximum number of days was 28. So obviously that's a gap of three. So we'll need to decrease it more than one in that case. So if day select dot value is still uh, nothing, even after trying to do this, for example, so there is no 29th uh, of February, sorry, there is no 30 for February, even though we decreased uh, 31 by 1. So then what we'll do is we'll need to decrease it by 2, so we'll check for 29. Now the maximum that we need to decrease by is 3, like an example that I just showed you where we needed to decrease from 31 to 28, and that's the most we'll decrease by. And yeah, so we should have a finished application now, we go back February, and then we go to 28, perfect. And then obviously this will work because every month has at least 25 and then different years. And yeah, we've got other variables here. And again, I know this is, this video is aimed more at beginners because I couldn't see any videos on how to actually do this, even though it is pretty basic JavaScript code, not too complicated. 
And obviously you can style all this out yourself because I know the styling is pretty basic. It's probably not what you want in an actual production app. But again, if you have any comments, then please post them down in the comments box below. I'd love to hear back from you. And I'd also really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. You'd be doing me a huge favour if you did that. But more importantly, peace out and have a great day.